this new update from lovable.dev can literally destroy Webflow and Framer. So this new update combines the power of natural language prompting as well as visually coding as how you would do inside of Framer and Webflow. And you can actually edit granularly and reprompt, which is very decent. So let's jump right in. And so I have a prompt right here. In order to go here, you want to make sure you're going to lovable.dev, right? And so we'll refresh here. And I'm going to type in here and just say, build a website for a web development agency that specializes in bespoke sites. Make sure it looks very premium. Okay, so we're going to use that prompt. Enter. And so now it's uh, starting to create a prompt from the prompt that it just created. Essentially, it's trying to make sure that it's more direct and it's a little bit more granular with instructions. So right here, it's creating design inspirations, uh, feature the first version, design elements, so everything. So it just expanded my prompt into something that's more detailed. And right now, it's actually creating all the classes for what I'm just doing. So index.css, cool. And it's doing by itself. I think this is using um, Claude. I'm not sure if it's actually Claude or um, some other models, but it's relatively fast and it feels very well, very well done. TSX, cool. It's even adding animate on scroll, which is pretty cool. Now it's creating all the text, bespoke solutions set out for unique business needs. It, it's okay for the copy, of course. This is not created for the copy. This is more of a development platform. So it's doing that. Okay, now it has finished the prompting and we shall see how the preview would look like. So let's try to check the preview. And uh, right here, it's still refreshing. Don't need that yet. So there we go. We have this right here. It's cool because it even has a nav bar. Um, has all the recent projects here. Cool. There's a little bit of a. Uh, they didn't add the image yet because you could prompt that. But you have a view project here. You got a CTA. I think we can fix on this. So let's just say we want to work on this, right? And we want to modify that. And so the cool thing with this new update, new feature that I want to show you is that you can press this button right here. And then you can change literally everything here, just how it is inside of Webflow. And so you could select the width, you could change the color to instead of white to this, or what I would do is make it dark, that's the color for the font. Good, make it black, better. Background, uh, gray, cool. There we go. You just edited that, that's how it is in Webflow. It's like directly a no-code editor while you're doing the prompting. And so I have not seen anything like this with an app. I've seen how Framer would do that, but the results are pretty much different because here inside of Lovable, you could build literally web apps with databases. And so this is a front end editor with a pretty much an MVP already. And so you're doing this, you're doing that. Now, the next thing that you could do here is that let's just say, um, let's save that. Let's just say I want to add, um, Maybe I don't like this type of section where it's centered, all right? And so I'm just gonna click on the section here and I'm gonna ask Lovable to edit this. Instead of editing it inside of here, I can literally just prompt it by saying, can you left align the text and then right align the image? I want it in two separate columns. Okay, put that there. Let's just wait. Okay, now it has updated and it literally just did what I said and it's done properly. Let's try to see the mobile responsive of this. Wow, that's that's even responsive. That's very cool, you know? Um, what I wanna do here is I wanna make sure that the button expands into full 100% width inside of the mobile version. So I'll tell that lovable to do that. So expand the buttons 
into 100% with when it is on the mobile version. So I haven't tried this. Let's see how it would look like. Boom. Boom. It's done. It looks amazing. This is, this is very well built considering that we didn't take to do anything at all, but just naturally prompt it. Look at that. And it's so controllable. You could add everything here. This could be dynamic. This could be database driven. That's how it is with lovable. And so just look at that. It's so amazing. You know, what the heck? And so I'm excited how this would would go it's not yet in its final form lovable just put this update as a first update and the thing is this is good enough it's not like an awards worthy type of project it's not some some award-winning website but it's good enough and good enough is good enough for business when you're building mvps it doesn't have to be really designed well it just has to do the function it just has to be there just has to have a cta a form and you could do that all inside of here. Look at that. Even the nav bar here, there's a subtle animation. I didn't prompt that to do that and looks good. Less thinking for me. If I want to launch an MVP tomorrow and I just think of this app, you know, you could use cursor. Sure. You could use uh, replit, but if you want granular editing, lovable is pretty much on the top of the game right now because I could do everything with web apps and have very granular edits. Now, if you're trying to do this for enterprise sites, obviously this isn't the best bet if there's multiple users coming in. If you have marketing teams, you still need something that you can work together. And that's pretty much well done inside of Webflow because Webflow is pretty much built for Webflow, uh, is pretty much built for enterprise level edits. And so if you're building a, a really big app, not just an MVP, if you're building a whole marketing funnel inside of it, Webflow is the best for it because you could do all the systems in there, especially with all the things that they just updated with Webflow, all the components, all the variants. But if you're doing a quick and dirty MVP, this is the app, like an MVP for a web app, right? Like this is the perfect app. Like, so if you need landing pages and MVPs, this is the tool. It might be even killing Framer anytime soon. I don't know. What are your thoughts about this app? Comment down below. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you like this video. Hit that like if you like this video. Hit subscribe for more videos like this. And I will see you guys next time.